His name is as distinctive as Yves Saint Laurent and Christian Dior, but Napoleon Purtis is an Australian success story. He's the boy from Parramatta, the son of Greek immigrants who's made his name by making women and some men beautiful. Even world famous celebrities line up to have Napoleon work his makeup magic on their pampered faces. Napoleon's cosmetics business is now big business and has made him very wealthy. But it's nothing compared to the most precious thing in his life, his family. Very strong, very sexy. He's charismatic. <laughs> was like... like such a woman. Controlling. And then getting to do, getting to do sit ups as well. Blunt. I'm looking fat. And above all else, flamboyant. I feel like it's a bit Chiquita from Mexico. Mm. Napoleon Purtis is caught a lot of things, not all of them nice. And no frizz. But when you're as successful as he is, who really cares? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, perfect. It's a real test of character, isn't it, to be different? Absolutely. <laughs> because to be different, you have to be very strong and people looking at you and judging you. You have to be very strong for the amount of people that will come up and give you their opinion without even being asked for it, you know, and to walk away and kind of just brush it off. Brushing off the haters and brushing on the makeup a night version for is also much easier with wife Sula Marie by his side. Do you like that there or do you think that should be there? Either. In the Napoleonic Empire, she's the financial whiz Everything way in advance of to his creative extravagance. Is this the Lamington one? Yes, I think so, yes. I wouldn't mind the Lamington now. <laughs> and of course, they share a love Is that okay? of the products he designs and makes. In our life uh, together in the last 20 odd years, I think um, Napoleon's been ready before me three occasions. And every <laughs> other time, I just sit and wait. Today, in fact, Sulema said to me, when you're ready, I'll use the mirror after you. <laughs> Do you obsess over your own looks? I do obsess over my own looks because there's certain things that are just not automatically gifted to me in relation to looks. I put on weight really easily. So when I became enormously humongous, I'm an interventionist. I did the lap band because I wanted to kind of control that. Not to prime is a crime. Don't get shy now. You've been described as shrewd, focused and controlling. An unashamed self-promoter? Is that you? Am I a self-promoter? Absolutely, there's only one Pope in this Vatican. With Napoleon Purtis the man leading the way, Napoleon Purtis the company has become Australia's largest cosmetic brand, a celebrity necessity and family business with a turnover of more than $100 million a year. How does a boy from Western Sydney turn himself into the makeup king? <laughs> well, my mother wore a lot of makeup, even in the shop that we had in Sydney on the corner of Elizabeth and Liverpool Street. Full lipstick, full face, full eyes, full everything. And this is in the hamburger absolutely. joint that your dad ran. She'd serve a hamburger and a ham and cheese sandwich. Ham and cheese, do you like a salt and pepper? And she was in a full face of makeup. <laughs> Mum Liana is not only Napoleon's greatest supporter, she's the reason he's even in the makeup business. Dad John had hoped for something more traditional, a lawyer or a pharmacist. But growing up in Parramatta, Liana cultivated her son's creative flair by letting him experiment on her face. Did she wear that makeup outside the house? Not only did she wear it outside the house, but that particular function we went to, which my mother now knows how defining it was, one of the women said to her, oh, your makeup looks really heavy and your brows have a lot of blue in it. And she just... Blue? I put blue mascara in her brows because <laughs> I kind of thought that would have been a bit trendy and cool. That's a mother who clearly loves you. <laughs> clearly loves me and clearly encouraged me. Despite his penchant for facial perfection, after school, Napoleon went to university. It was another great move. He met Sula Marie. They fell in love and married quickly. Along with Napoleon's brother Emmanuel, 
The couple started the business soon after. Did you ever imagine that that barefoot, long-haired, 18-year-old you met at university was destined for great things? And let's not forget uh, look-alike of George Michael back in the day. <laughs> um, I, I always believed in him. But a lot has happened in the last 21 years and it was all like a dream and we started with $1,000 that his dad gave us and um, we made use of that to, to achieve this. But Napoleon and Sula Marie combined business with pleasure. Liana came first, then triplets, Angeline, Alexia and Athena. An unexpected but delightful surprise. In this female-dominated family, it's clear Napoleon picked the right business to make a fortune in. I mean, am I looking at the future of Napoleon Purtis here? You are. Liana is 16 and fast becoming a modelling pro. She's also a newly crowned it girl, has graced the covers of teen magazines and attracted worldwide headlines for her spectacular sweet 16th birthday. Today, she's the star of Napoleon's photo shoot. Do the girls tell you what's cool and what's not? Oh, they do. <laughs> you do do look that way. Don't be careful, he's getting very close there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all in the name of the photo, getting the right photo. <laughs> it's the after, it's the after time that's the most important enough of that. I think you're pretty safe when he knows Dad's looking on. <laughs> I mean, this is stunning through here. Yeah. So beautiful. It's like a little island, but in the city. <laughs> and hot on Liana's heels are her younger sisters, the 14-year-old triplets. Look, a lot of people see Napoleon Purtis as this outgoing, really kind of campy, um, colourful person over the, over the top, but for us, he's just our dad. These days, the Purtis family flits between homes in Australia and Greece. Yeah, our, we're really close, I can guess this is what he thinks. Yeah, and we tell each other, like, everything, and we always have, like... But those American accents are a leftover from when they lived in Los Angeles. So you guys were born in Australia, you yeah. grew up in the States, you sound American, and now you live in Greece. Yes. <laughs> we do, like, people get confused, they're like, so what are you? Like, you're Australian? The United States was actually Napoleon's Waterloo, a rare low light in this makeup mogul's fairy tale. He'd wanted to expand his empire, and in 2004, tried That's to right. take and on America. We, we were make it didn't Spain. work. And 18 months ago, Napoleon so was defeated. Pulling out of America, was that a failure? Pulling out of anything, I think, feels like a failure. As I've had time to reflect, um, I made mistakes. Why did you feel the need to conquer America? I really wanted the American flashbulbs and lights and recognition in the big cities and the big neons and the big department stores and all of that. It was actually something I had visualised as a child. And I imagine it's hard for you to, to give up on something. Um, I was very tortured for many nights. Sulamri called me and she said, it's like cancer, you've got to cut it off. I'm not interested in this further. If you can't cure it, you just have to get rid of it. We had a terrible kind of argument, but at the end of the day, she was right, um, and I did. Lucky you listened to her. <laughs> <laughs> I had no choice. I had to listen, I had no choice. Sunset in Athens, and it's dinner time on the rooftop at the Purtis household. It's an old-fashioned affair, full sit-down meal, just for family, and with no phones in sight. Are you a strict dad? They see it as strict now, but hopefully in the future they might just see it as, you know, a value system that they can access when they need it. This is the simple life. Do you think it's brought you all closer together, moving to Greece? I think Greece probably has been much more of a gluing, honey in, you know, of the family dynamic. Mm. So everything shuts on Sunday and so yeah. you don't really have any choice but to hang out with your family. Yeah, we, we Amazing to it. have family time yeah. to, like, yeah. 
have connections with If you have like a busy work. week or something, Sundays are like, you know, we can all catch up. While the family glows in the Greek sun, the business booms back in Australia. Little Nina. And Napoleon knows it's likely to stay that way because there's no shortage of able lieutenants happy to help out. So of all of the girls, who's most like him? Angeline. Angeline. Yeah. She's <laughs> definitely the boss out of all of us. She's the boss? Yeah. I would say I'm like the mini-me of my dad. And you want to follow quite a similar path to your dad? Yes, I do. In the future, I'm hoping to be like um, CEO. And I already know what Angeline wants to do. Has she told you? She has. She wants to run the company. <laughs> <laughs> you watch out for her. She might try and force you out. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, she might actually. <laughs> she does in a lot of other areas. Look out for me. At 46, though, this king of cosmetics is not yet ready to abdicate the throne. Sounds like they're raring to go. I mean, soon you'll be able to kick back and just put your feet up. <laughs> Well, I hope so, but uh, I don't know about kicking back. I kind of like the work <laughs> and being busy. He's not giving up the reins anytime soon. <laughs> well, the company's still Napoleon Curtis, so that's not going to change, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs>